I believe I put forth to you before the hypothetical, theoretical, and the factual question of what it is that I have to offer you. What is the value of that which I offer to you as the truth, that which I offer to you as the way, the life, and the light? What is the benefit that one gets from adopting the belief and stance and faith that truth is God, that God is truth? The truth is above all. The truth is the glory. That we should serve truth in the same manner as those who are theists serve their God. That we should follow the tenet of truth just as those who are theists follow the tenets of their say religion that you should take and embrace my word my speech my understanding my guidance just as those who are theists take such from their minister, their pastor, their rab rabbi, their imam, etc., etc. I was in the Salvation Army today, and the Salvation Army is a Christian based store. All the money that the monies that they get, they use for the purpose of doing things community under the banner of Christianity, under the banner of Christ. You would hear Christian music played inside the store. You would see signs up about Jesus, whatnot. So there's a song today. Um, I believe I can fly. Um, there's, of course, the version done by R. Kelly. This was by someone else. Um, and they spoke of being able to fly with God being behind them. What came to mind is Christians as well as these Muslims, I guess, Wales, Hebrews. Jews, well, as those who serve a sentient being in God, those who serve a God that gives specific direction and laws and has a specific plan and that is thoughtful in this plan and in this direction and also may even give a reward or do a lot of punishment. What you often hear these people, these people, these theists, the servant of God, is that their God has a plan. You also hear that they will believe in great things, the power, the ability to great things, with God being on their side. They believe they can fly because God will allow them to do such. Not in the literal sense, but in the theoretical sense of just being able to achieve goals that may be seem unreachable but with the grace of God under the grace of God they will can achieve such yeah what we are faced with in truth and this is in truth it is if it is not in truth then the truth will just say so Truth itself would say so. At the same time, they say this: that with the, with the calamities, with the 
the trials and tribulations that those who are theists encounter in our life, that they must say, well, that is God's will. As their loved ones suffer, as their close ones suffer, are killed, go through the same trials and tribulations as those of other religions, those without religions, those who serve the anti antithesis to that which they serve, meaning there are those who serve God and there are even those who say they serve the devil, that they all experience the same thing in life. That they will say that I can do great things with God. And yet it is in essence an arbitrary thing that they can achieve such things because it is only by way of the will and wants of God that they can do such. They will say that they can do nothing without God and yes, ultimately that means that everything they do must be by way of God yet at the same time they will profess that the greatest gift that God has given us is free will. Freedom to choose our actions, the freedom to choose our beliefs. Yet at the same time, God has a plan. Yet at the same time, God wills everything. It is by way of God all things occur, but same time we have free will. Thus, any and everything they do is only by will and wants of a God wanting them to do such. A God actively be thinking and Acting upon his her, his thoughts, his desires, his wants, and force, forcefully imposing them upon his being. And yet, people will serve and say, "Well, I still, I can, I can do this. I can do that, if God allows me." So, it is all once again upon God's will. Even the pain and the suffering. Even the lack of saving ones from the, the torment, the anguish, the agony of living in this world. Just by way of him not interjecting himself and preventing such, it is an allowance of such to occur. And this is the truth of what we are faced with, with all of us, what they are faced with, but they have come to some resolution where it is okay. They have deemed it okay that there is a God that loves them, that wants the best for them, that can give them the power to achieve great things, yet at the same time allow them to suffer and to go through pain and agony, and allow and will allow them to fail, or will cause them to fail in their endeavors because it is God's will. This is a contradiction. This is hypocrisy. Yes, that is the truth. Yes, I'm only trying to speak the truth. I, I, I'm asking this in truth. Is that what it is? And yet, in truth, I'm also faced with of what it is I offer. And when I say that truth is God, well, what we are faced with is still there is a lack of control. Because as I put forth truth, I say, well, truth is God. I will say as I feel that I am compelled, as I must say, as I am staying in truth, that, well, truth is, and truth is in God. That the truth is maybe... There is not salvation and truth. That truth is not the way that there must be something. There must be a God, a sent and be it. It is love. It is something else. 
And so for everything I put forth, I will counter it by saying, well, maybe the truth is it isn't. And so that's, I guess, my myself that has come to embrace this, just have those of re religion have embraced their gods and what may be considered a flaw or whatnot. And that, yes, I have accepted the flaws of my own theology, if it is my own, my own belief, and that at the same time I'm saying this truth, at the same time I'm saying, well, maybe I can't know truth. And so as I am confused about what it is, how it is they embrace what they have, then I am forced to say, well, the same is just the mind, that they cannot see and they cannot embrace mine because there is a lack of, there is something missing. There is a shortcoming, there is a flaw in it. So as we, as we contrast and compare, each it is one living a life under a sentient, be, sentient being who is directly and purposely influencing every aspect of our life and all that the curve. And that I myself incur these same things, these same trials and tribulations, the same struggle of going through this life in this world. But my God is not a sentient God who purposely does this. It's just that I am subjected to the will and purpose of truth itself. Now I'm saying that I'm subject to the will and purpose of the operations of this world, literally of this world, of this planet, the ob objective makeup of this planet, of this world, of this universe, of this galaxy, of it all. Subjected to the rules of nature, subjected to the rules of gravity and all that exists. Those things which is beyond me. So I'm subjected to. I'm at the will also. Of that which is. Greater than me. But what I found solace is that there is not a purposeful act on my pain and suffering. That I don't have something that is telling me one thing that may do another, that may be there for me, may not, that everything comes upon my ignorance, I guess I could be said about those who do this, and upon that which I can really see and, and have some thought about. I can connect A to B to C to D down to Z. I can look upon cause and effect, where those who are theists cannot, they have to go upon the, upon the cause and effect of their God, of the will of their God. I haven't got the point where I thought, well, can a Christian even guarantee that they will go to heaven? Can a Christian guarantee that they will go to heaven? Can one who has said they believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior guarantee they can go to heaven? Because the truth is, Christians have done things within the name of their Lord and God and gone forth and in full faith and belief that it's going to happen and it's not occurred. So if it is the will of God to say, well, actually, no, you're not going to go to heaven, you're going to go to hell, do they not have to accept this as a possibility? For they do not know the will of God, he may have another purpose. They are willing to accept that God has a purpose in the things he does, which can even through the trials and tribulations, well, if one is consistent, and it is all about consistency, and yet we know that there is a lack of consistency, there is always contradictions and flaws when we look within the minds and souls and the speech and the actions of those who are theists, and I guess within humanity itself as a whole, there is a lack of consistency. But if we're consistent, then one can never say truly what God is going to do, even if God has said is going to do something, because God has said, for instance, all things can be done within the name of Jesus Christ. And yet, not all things have been done. Not everything has been achieved. That's one who has sought to do something within the name of that entity or being. It has not worked. There are those who have made plans. And they didn't say that you cannot make a plan. But what is it saying that one, when one makes a plan, God laughs? 
So a Christian plans to go to heaven, well, there's any guarantee that they will. You know, I'm sure they will fight to the death and say, yes, they will, because God will do that. But in truth, and there's always in truth, and I must always come back to truth. I must at least attempt to come back to truth. And the truth is, maybe I fail, maybe I come short. But it's not because I freely will to be such. It's because I lack the free will to have such. I cannot willfully know all that there is. If I can, would I ever know? No one truly ever know that they know everything. Can one ever truly know that they know what is right and justice and just and righteous? Even the ones saying they're going to heaven can one truly know that they're in heaven. Even they're completely happy. Would they ever really know how to truly know? As a human being, yes, we must fall back in belief. And we're going to believe in what shall you believe in? If it is not truth. <laughs> 